Hi everyone, welcome to this Goggle Docs video. Today we're going to be talking about phenerenone, also known as Carendia. Now we've previously spoken about this medication in the context of type 2 diabetes and chronic kidney disease. However, today we're going to be talking about the latest study for this molecule where it's being used in people with heart failure. And in particular, cohorts of uh, people with an ejection fraction above 40%. And now traditionally, this is a group of people for whom there have been very few management options. So there is hope and potential uh, that this molecule may change that. We're going to be going through the details of this study, which is actually going to be uh, presented in more detail at the European Society of Cardiologists Congress, which is happening at the end of this month in August in London itself. So we've got that to look forward to, but we've got some information and data so far and some top line results. Now, phenerenone is actually being investigated in a broad range of heart failure scenarios and settings uh, in what's known as the Moonraker program. So uh, cue some uh, references to James Bond and uh, Roger Moore. Uh, thanks for that, Patrick. Uh, but this is really interesting. So we're seeing the evolution of yet another molecule from you know, the, the type 2 diabetes and diabetic kidney disease uh, area into the much broader uh, area of uh, uh, cardiology and heart failure. So this is going to be really interesting. So I'm going to hand over to you, Patrick. Perhaps you can give us a top line of what we're expecting to find from this trial and maybe some details uh, of the investigation as well. Well, as you mentioned already, uh, Bayer, as is customary for these big companies with shareholders, have already made an announcement to the stock exchange that that this was a positive study. So the primary outcome, um, which uh, uh, so the primary outcome was a reduction in cardiovascular. It was a composite, so cardiovascular death, and uh, worsening heart failure. Um, so that's both hospitalisation and acute uh, clinic visits. So um, uh, so that was achieved with phenanorin. So it, it reduces that, and we were also told it was well tolerated. So I suspect that's in terms of reference, particularly in terms of hyperkalemia, because that was something that was mentioned before in terms of the design of the study. Um, but of course, it was studying this population, which is is only poorly. Um, uh, studied already in terms of there are very few therapies and SGLT2 inhibitors being the probably the key one certainly in terms of license of, of this with this higher rejection fraction so HEFMAREF and HEFPEF and so there was big study 6,000 patients and uh, there was um, the actual mean ejection fraction was 53 so that's very much in the HEFPEF space there was 36 percent in this um, HEFMAREF space, so most patients with HEFPEF, so that's good to see. Um, there was, um, uh, uh, in terms of comorbidities, you, you had about 41% had type 2 diabetes, 48% had an EGFR below 60, and again that's important particularly when we're thinking about hyperkalemia. Uh, medications, uh, the vast majority on beta blockers, um, uh, but only 14% on SGLT2 inhibitors, um, so, um, yeah, so it, an important study, it, the detail we're going to get later on, I suppose, um, in London, but, but it, it looks like this is adding to a, a key area where we haven't really got great therapies. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned we don't have a lot of therapies. Obviously, SGLT2 inhibitors uh, in the last couple of years have started to be used in this cohort of patients and, and, uh, and have that license, particularly for two, two, two agents there. We didn't see that group of people taking SGLT2 inhibitors really being represented much in this study. Uh, there are reasons for that, I'm sure. But are there some concerns that we're missing out on some information as well there? Yeah, so that was the, that's the baseline characteristic. So obviously, it'd be interesting to see what the level of drop in is in the study. Uh, and of course, the problem when you're getting drop in of effective therapies is it might uh, it does sometimes challenge the study itself. But, but it would be, I mean, we know as well, there is a growing evidence base. I don't think we know, but there's a growing evidence base that SGLT2 inhibitors appear to be associated with reduced hyperkalemic events, which is um, something we expect from diuretics. So, so that's um, somewhat, um, uh, so it's a shame in a sense, we haven't got that, that too much of that cohort. So, so it'd be interesting to see if the outcomes, particularly in terms of hyperkalemia, are again lower in that uh, in the combination, um, the people who already start with SGLT2 inhibitors, but the, 
but the, but it's only going to be small, so there's going to be wide confidence intervals. So, so how much we can gain from it, I don't know, but no doubt there'll be loads of data coming through. I suspect we won't get all of that in London, simply because the study's only just recently been finished and, is, and, and the results announced. So, so I think there'll be further analysis, but but it'd be interesting to see, yeah, that interaction between SGLT2 inhibitors and phenenerone in terms of both the clinical positive outcomes, but also those adverse effects, because there's potential, um, that combination does feel like it'd be something really quite useful. We, we you know, we, there's growing evidence for that with people with low rejection fraction. So, yeah, how, how about these patients with an ejection fraction above 40%? Yeah, and I think just talking about the, the real world use of uh, phenerinone, I mean, the study really focused on quite high risk patients, uh, multi morbidity, um, people with uh, symptomatic heart failure, um, and so challenging people actually for, for management. I mean, what does, I know it's just top line data at the moment that we have, but if there is a real positive finding with phenerinone, how much of a difference do you think this could really make to that to that cohort of people? And how do you think that will then reflect in primary care? Well, it's so I think it's really important. Uh, this, as you say, th this is a complex group. These patients are the ones only the minority of the patients we see with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Those ones are already going into hospital, uh, perhaps. So. Um, so I think if we do get positive findings, I think, first of all, it will highlight the importance of this cohort of patients. So that hopefully they're going to be better prioritised than they currently are in terms of pathways. Um, so we can properly manage these in primary care because we can't manage these on our own. I do think we need input from cardiologists to, to and they're very good, actually, at championing uh, pathways. Uh, so so I'm hoping that will help fuel that. And again, it it, it, it the other aspect is really the breakdown between hef -Maref, where it does look to be similar uh, from what I can see to heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. It looks like uh, the, the therapies which seem to work in that cohort seem to w also work in hef -Maref. But the hef -Pef population, which is a fair number of my patients with type 2 diabetes, obese, older people, women more than men, um, you know, hypertension, they with heart uh, with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. It'll be really interesting to see what we get with that. And I think the mechanism of action of of a non steroidal in terms of reducing that fibrosis and reducing the inflammation. We know those are challenges within that HEF-PEF cohort, as it is to be fair in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. It'd be really interesting to see what what we get with this. Um, therapy as well as obviously the safety aspects and there's also promise you know the there was evidence of it reducing cardiovascular events such as MI such as stroke you know SGLT2 inhibitors aren't so good at doing that um, um, they do reduce sudden death that's an important thing and they reduce hospitalization to heart failure in particular so so it, 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 it but if we've got other agents which work in other ways um, it yeah, as I said, it, it should hopefully fuel greater prioritisation as well as improved outcomes, because you're right, we are starting to use phenenerone, but there are only small numbers of patients on it. So I think I think it will it will fuel interest in this. I think, quite honestly, it'll get us reminders about the benefits in CKD as well. Yeah, yet another molecule that started off in in one area and is now evolving, like we saw with the SGLT2 inhibitors. Uh, so a, a very exciting time. What a time to be alive in 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 this uh, in this field. You know, we've we've been you know so so um, pleasantly surprised by many of these things. But uh, just to wrap up, we've got ESC coming up. Um, I know that uh, you're looking forward to interacting with some of the authors of of this uh, uh, paper. Um, you know, I, I know you perhaps want to give a shout out to some of them as well. We'll definitely give a shout out to one because we've we've I've worked with Mutu before and certainly he's uh, one of our internet buddies. Uh, Amar in particular, I'm sure, will be 
badgering him to get him on um, and uh, because he's one of the co-authors I know he's presenting some of the data so Mutu if you're watching and we'll certainly tag you into this video it'll be great to get your insights because I'm uh, uh, in terms of you know not only the study but what the implication is to clinical practice because I think that's probably the most important thing when it comes to you know the people who are watching this video or the people who are going to benefit from that in terms of their patients so it, it'll be yeah important so Mutu you come and help us uh, get through the data on this and show us uh, why this what this really adds to the evidence base and how this can fuel better care for our patients nothing like a shameless shout out uh, to, to, to someone of, of you know uh, such wisdom and knowledge. So brilliant. Thanks, Patrick. As always, you've dissected uh, the detail there for us, uh, something for us to really look forward to. Uh, perhaps just to bear in mind that obviously this molecule in this area, heart failure, we're perhaps several months away uh, from it being you know, approved uh, and licensed for use. But, but hope, hope for people who are living with heart failure um, in these cohorts uh, and also as clinicians as well for something that we can utilize in our practices. But for today, that's all. Thanks again, Patrick. Thank you everyone for watching. See you soon. Bye.